Hello again everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am McSnazzy and today we are back in Ranger Park Zoo playing some more Planet Zoo. Now today we are on episode 3 of our new Ranger Park Zoo series. If you haven't seen episode 1 or 2, I suggest you check them out. There's going to be a playlist in the description below. Now for this episode we're going to do a little bit less than we did last time because last episode was pretty long so I wanted to make this one a lot shorter. Um, so just, just the basic 20 minutes that we usually would do for an episode, but uh, we, we just did a lot of work last episode, I got a little carried away. But this week we're going to be doing a, a butterfly house, I kind of mentioned at the end of the last video that I wanted to do this, I know there's no butterflies in the game, but we can still make a cool looking butterfly house, put an exhibit in there, and the, the guests will walk in anyway. So we do this, and we also do a little bit of touch up on the left side of the entryway to the park along with uh, do a little bit with the train over there as well so a short episode but we get a little bit done I do also do a little planning as well with the backstage areas that we will tackle more in the future but to uh, start off here we're building up the butterfly house I wanted to start with the roof here because I know for butterfly houses you kind of need this greenhouse roof because the butterflies need the natural light in order to you know thrive and actually be able to live in an enclosed place like that 24 7 so you need a lot of cool uh, foliage in there plants flowers and whatnot for them to pollinate and you know actually like survive in so the greenhouse uh, ceiling or roof is a must so I want to start with that um, once you kind of get that established you can work on the base of the structure because I think the uh, the greenhouse top is the most important it's pretty much the most integral part so you want to make sure that you get that done first now before I started building the greenhouse, or not the greenhouse, the uh, butterfly house here, I uh, raised the ground a little bit, so I kind of wanted this to be up on a slope of sorts. I felt so far the zoo has been pretty flat, which it kind of is, and I think a lot of zoos are pretty flat, but uh, one of the things when I got further into the Timber Gorge uh, project was uh, noticed the zoo was pretty flat so I tried to add height variants where I could so I like the idea of in maybe future builds just <clears throat> kind of playing around with the terrain tools a little bit before I place the building down it just makes it look like it's set in a little more realistic or natural setting than it just being like a flat piece of ground throughout so I tried to do a little bit of a raised uh, area here for the butterfly house and a little bit going further down and kind of over by the uh, train station as well now what I really wanted to do with the, uh, well with this build was do sort of an irregular shape. Um, I didn't want it to be super blocky um, and I didn't want it to necessarily be just a plain old circular shape that really the game lets you do with the, the circular wall pieces etc. So I kind of wanted to do a different shape and look I end up scrapping all that because the grids were way off. So I wanted to add this sort of, uh, I guess triangular edge slanted edge to use maybe a better term but I wanted it to have a little bit of uniqueness to it not just be a you know a bland old planet zoo building that's just a block because that's what the game allows you to do uh, very easily so I kind of wanted to do this slant and it really uh, makes doing the walls or not the walls doing the roofs on this uh, this slanted part a lot harder but I end up coming up with a solution but it took me a while to do and you'll, you'll see a little bit of that in the time lapse but yeah I just thought it was added a little bit more realism to the build because I think a lot of you know realistic buildings use regular shapes uh, it's sort of like an art architecture sort of uh, standpoint in order to make the building look a lot more interesting so I kind of want to do that here so I did and I think it turned out great it looks super cool in the end I'm really happy with how it turned out I didn't expect it to necessarily look the way it did when I started building it this way but it does look great I ended up going through a lot of iterations of roofs here as well um, but none of them really stuck except this one and this is more for an Asian sort of theme but I think it works here anyway now you can see me sort of struggling with the uh, the corner roofs on these slanted edges and I wish they made a piece for this it's kind of like a triangle that works I guess those kind of work uh, right there but they didn't really fit for this uh, this sort of slant that I did but um, I think it works it, it does in the end and we find a piece that 
actually can fill in the area and will look like a little bit of this roof. It's not going to look the exact same, but it looks a little bit like an accent, like it was meant to be there, even though I kind of just had to do it like that. So I think that's a, a cool aspect of this build that really isn't in a lot of the, my other builds. Now here I wanted to go with a brick accent, potentially for the uh, building itself. Now in the end, if you remember from the cinematics you saw at the beginning, it doesn't actually look like it's the end. I kind of just use wood and there's the cut there, a lot cleaner. I do this part here to show a little bit of the piece that I use in order to make that sort of slanted roof area work. But I'll show more of that in the real time walkthrough uh, in a moment. But yeah, I went for a little bit of a wood trim. I know I kind of overuse the wood trim a little bit, so I'm gonna try to step away from it a little bit in uh, future episodes for future builds because I feel like it's sort of a crutch but it does look really realistic when I do it so that's why I kind of go back to it a lot but I did use a accent piece to help with the trim if you can see right below the roof there there's a little bit of a stone accent piece that works as well but for this build I also wanted to do a little bit of that tiered walkway up to it like I did for the staff building I thought that was super cool, super realistic, and it's just something I don't really, or really haven't done much in the game. So I think it works really well. It's a little hard to get the paths to go with it so that the uh, the peeps can actually walk up it, but I think it's just labor of love and it's just something you have to grind out in order to go for this cool looking uh, tiered walk up. So for the side here, I wanted to go for some basic planters. I didn't want to reuse wood again, even though it's really tempting to because, you know, wood planters do sound really, or do look really good. But I like this whole aspect that we did over in the staff building where we put the mulch kind of like up so it's not like sunken down into the planter. So I kind of like when it's a little bit at the top of the planter so it, it kind of looks like there's a lot of mulch in there. You know, mulch goes a little above ground level in, you know, real life landscaping. So I think it adds a little bit more realism and it just looks like the planters are really intentional and like are there for a reason and uh, you know, not just look like you put little walls around it to make it look like a planter. It actually looks like it's a planter that's full of mulch and you know can support trees like we put these uh, cypress trees here I think they look really good um, pretty clean I try to stay away from that a little bit when I'm going for the the realism aspect because I know a, a real life realistic zoo would not look super clean all the time and uh, you know it's not like a Disneyland sort of thing where it's picture perfect it's it's gonna be a little sloppy in areas even in the vegetation so I wanted to show a lot of me making this tiered uh, area here so you guys can do it in your zoos. Um, for this little retaining wall, I brought it out a lot more than I wanted to necessarily. I think it looks good in the end, but that's because of the slope of the hill there. Uh, the ground would have clipped through and we wouldn't have been able to uh, really put the retaining wall there with the ground clipping through because it, it just wouldn't have worked. You can't have ground clipping through a build. So I extend it out a little more. I think it adds a little bit of accent to it, and I, I like how it turns out in the end. Now, for the uh, foliage aspect around this uh, butterfly house, I really want it to look hidden. Like, you kind of just find this when you're walking around the zoo. It's not like the big attraction that you're going for. Like, you know exactly where the lions are or something like that. It's not the super big attraction that you're going there for. It's just kind of like a hidden gem that you find when you're walking around the zoo. And I think that's a really cool aspect. So I want it to be kind of hidden, like you discover it. And I find when I look at a lot of these zoos in the uh, the Google Maps, which is really helpful when you look at the first person walk arounds in those, um, you can really see the realism aspects that you can add to your builds. And a lot of that is in a lot of these zoos, you kind of have to explore for stuff. At least the zoos I'm using reference for are a lot of the Midwestern zoos that I've actually been to because I'm going for a Midwest uh, feel here and it's it's a Midwestern zoo is where Ranger Park is going to be set in so a lot of the walking around that zoo it's a lot of discovering there's a lot of dense vegetation lots of trees and it doesn't necessarily guide you completely well like a theme park would theme park is going to lead you straight into this and that with a lot of signage and everything but in the zoos I feel like you know you kind of explore and you find everything on your own and it's just it's just another fun aspect of going to the zoo there's a lot of nature involved in it a lot of trees because you know it, it is a zoo after all it's all about conservation so I think that adds more realism 
having these builds kind of hidden in certain areas. There's there's definitely occasions where you want them to be out there. This is a big building, like uh, for they have shows and theaters um, for like conservation education stuff at zoos. Those buildings you definitely want it to be out there for the kids and stuff. But something like the butterfly house, I think it. It's better if it has the aspect where it's sort of hidden and you go and find it in all this vegetation. And I know I just blabbed on about uh, why I did it um, this way. You know, I, I, you guys probably don't really care about the vegetation, but I just wanted to give you sort of a, a feel of why I, I took that design decision and uh, did it that way. So I, I kind of like hiding it. I really like how the zoo is when you're walking through right now, where it's a lot of big trees over the uh, the paths and just kind of walking around a nice little nature walk uh, going to see some animals so we'll definitely be adding some more animals in the next episode but we didn't get to one this one i guess if you count the exhibit animals we have the uh, boa constrictor and uh i think one of the cockroaches the, maybe the hissing cockroach or no i think it's a centipede but those are in the butterfly house so uh we technically added animals it doesn't really count but you know next episode we'll do a nice big exhibit because i'm really looking forward to that but i didn't want to jam pack this episode as much as i did the last one because the last one got pretty long so i kind of wanted to be a little more tame with this one just do one build and we do a little bit of touch up um along the front entrance as well that needed it on that left side and i'll show a little bit of footage of that in a second but you'll see more of it in the, the real time walkthrough um because really all i did was uh the station where the train is as you can see me build it up right now um just wanted to do something basic here it's more utilitarian more uh just there for a purpose for some shade it's not really super themed i guess you could kind of say it's a little themed with the corrugated roof here um it kind of looks a little westerny a little like ch train western you know railroad blah 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 but uh i think it's just i was really just going for you know something that works it just works uh for the sake of working because you just want people to have shade when they're going to the station and really the the station is more of a people mover it's not like a big attraction of the park so that's another bit why i didn't want to do something crazy here but we'll jump into the real time portion in here in a second and we'll wrap up this video thank you guys Now we are in first person mode doing our walk through here. I'm in Tejid Cam or Peep View. Let's uh, actually turn the turn it on so the people are moving. But here we're at the start of the park, so I want to show everything that we did do in this video up close so I can kind of explain it. Um, I like how the staff building looks from here, but we'll just step right in. It just looks really good in first person. And there you can see the the butterfly house in the distance. I love that sight line. As so you walk and you're like, hey, what's that? And you want to go like over there and see. So I did work this way in this video. As last video, I did not touch this area at all. So we kind of created this retaining wall. I know it kind of juts over a little bit, but I couldn't really do too much about it with the way the path's set up and the train's kind of wonky. I might go back and fix it at some point, but right now it was more about the butterfly house this episode this was kind of a side thing so I did finish this it's clean it looks like a little bridge that you go over a little seating area I made this sort of uh, it kind of looks like a, a, a zoom map but I put the uh, education boards in here for the uh, deforestation um, climate change all that stuff under this little pergola because there was this blank space and I wanted to fill it with something I thought another education board was cool because I haven't put any of these in the, the park yet so I kind of wanted to add them in I also added these I know they say anteater and tapir but I wish I could change them to say like ducks or turtles or something just the local fauna that would be in this uh, this pond right here and I add a little art shaped turtle there as well but that's about it for this little bridge over here we've just you know bought a bunch of foliage in lots of trees so it looks nice and wooded so you want to go exploring and i've done this i showed this a little bit in the video that we're creating this uh sort of gondola for the train station sort of a train station itself i called it paw station this still needs a lot of work it was just an initial thing to sort of get something else in the video other than the butterfly house and i kind of wanted to 
clean this up a little bit before I move down further in the park even though it's not finished it will probably not get finished until we finish up the zoo because you kind of need it to go to the back of the zoo and etc but we'll go look at the butterfly house in first person mode this is the big thing for the video I just love how it turns out it looks great and it looks super cool I love this tiered sort of stepway we did for it and see how the peeps walk up they kind of sink in a little bit but it's okay I think but the tiers just make it look great and it looks like a nice wooded building it's covered with all this foliage and ivy crawling on it I think it's been here for a while just something you kind of discover as you're walking around and we'll actually go inside there's nothing really in here uh, except a couple exhibit animals I think this one's a centipede and then this one is gonna be a snake the boa constrictor yeah right there but that's just to get them walking in here and uh, it looks really nice in here I wish we could have butterflies because that would be pretty cool but that's about it um, I'll show you guys we'll jump out of first person here and, uh, go into that and sort of see what we're looking at now I did a little bit of planning I'll get to that in a second but I want to show you what I did for here how the edges are weird not square it was hard to do this sort of thing that I did here to make this look like it because there's no pieces that are like off triangle so I wanted to show you that we just use this like topper piece and it doesn't look perfect but it does work with the style so even if you're stuck and you're not sure what to do if you want to make like a cool off like, building that's not necessarily a square you know you can just find a piece and make it work um, so that's sort of a little tip for that but I love how it turns out I love how it's kind of hidden in a bunch of trees um, so you kind of gotta go find it it's kind of like a mysterious little butterfly house hidden in the jungle or something like that it gives a big zoo vibe for me so I really enjoy that added a little air conditioning unit back here because uh, the butterflies would need like a humid and you know controlled environment but the big glass looks great and if you're at the front of the zoo just you can see this it's kind of on the little hill here a little bit of a train variance because it's been really flat so far in the zoo so I wanted to do that but really like how it turns out just like like something out of like Indiana Jones or something this building but it's super cool I love it so I did a little planning I took the sort of terrain variance out to here and I kind of wanted to make the paths meet again up here and here and we might we're gonna put some animals or I'm thinking a food court in here because we haven't put any shops in yet and I think uh, at this point of the zoo after you've walked a bit you might want to have the option um, over here I've lifted this this is definitely gonna be an exhibit I'm not sure I think I might do Africa Savannah or something like that something that we didn't really touch in Timber Gorge that was kind of the last thing we were doing but we never finished it so I kind of want to tackle that right away in this zoo because it's a different sort of exhibit than I that I have had experience with in the past. Over in this backstage area, I know we didn't touch it this video, but I kind of extended the fence, kind of fenced off this area. So this is what we're going to do for our backstage. I made these paths, so it's kind of laid out with the sand representing buildings. So we'll have a little warehouse here, warehouse here, or whatever. And we'll have a big warehouse here that trucks will go in and stuff and it just kind of uh, separates it it looks kind of industrial and uh, you know definitely backstage what they would have so I'm really happy with the layout and we're gonna have to get to that in another video I think in the next video though we will definitely be doing an animal maybe here or here because uh, this video we didn't touch one but I didn't want this video to go as long as the previous one so I didn't want to do too much over here as well, I went inside here and moved this staff building, or the staff center over. So this path goes out, so the staff will actually use this to get to other parts of the zoo. So in the future when we have, you know, animals here, maybe animals here, just when it evolves, the staff may actually walk into this backstage area and walk around these paths in order to access, you know, more quickly access these exhibits which I think will be awesome that's kind of why I wanted to connect these and look ones are you going through right now the path is kind of wonky so it goes down pretty quick but this is exactly what I wanted just uh, another aspect of realism that I really want to do in this zoo and maybe I should move those dumpsters then if they're gonna 
walk through that, but this is cool. This is what I wanted them to do. And once this area is fleshed out, we have the warehouses, it'll look a lot better. But that's about it for this video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again, everybody. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and stay tuned for more Ranger Park Zoo.